Yeah. You're all good. <laughs> What's with the spoon, man? <laughs> it's all about you, about you. What? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Shoot me. <laughs> Have the leprechaun come in here and do it for me? Yes. You feel me? I feel you. Over it for today, yeah. As many of you know, my name is Domenica, and I decided that when I was 18, I was going to leave the house, and I moved to Sonoma County to study music. Well, after a short one month of living out of the house, I was involved in a car accident that completely changed my life in ways that I had never imagined that it possibly could have ever changed my life. I was... Driving along, it was a sunny day, had a friend with me in the car, and a truck hit me going, I don't know, fast. And I hit my chest on the steering wheel, and I hit my head on the window, which left me to have a severe short-term memory loss that lasted six months. I had a lot of whiplash, I had a neck sprain, a back sprain, and doctors later found out that I even fractured my neck. These injuries, were something that I could have never even been prepared for. Living in chronic pain is a nightmare, a complete nightmare. And if you know me personally, you know that my second love next to music is dance. So when doctors are looking at you and they're saying, I'm sorry, you'll never dance again. You just won't take that for, for an answer. It'll be like, yeah, no, sorry, I'm absolutely gonna dance again. And if you have a love like that, whether it be a sport something that you physically need to move your body for, you'd probably act the same way, right? Well, I could barely walk, and I was stubborn, and couldn't remember anything. Had to drop out of school for a couple semesters because I couldn't remember what I was studying. I had lost everything that I had previously learned. And so I decided, you know, a couple months later, I was gonna venture out into the world. I'd been laying in bed for months, wasn't doing anything. Decided to venture out into the world, and I was involved in another car accident. Again, not my fault. I don't know what the universe was trying to tell me. Maybe slow down. I don't know. But I was sent hurling down the freeway going 65 miles an hour. My car spun into a 360, and I hit the center divider head on. I remember just sitting in my car before the police got there and just thinking, what? Could it get any worse than this? Could it get any worse than this? Just left the house only a few months ago. I'm missing my family. They're not anywhere to be found because they don't live there. I'm missing my friends back home. This is, the, all odds are against me here. For whatever reason, don't know what it is. I remember laying in bed just being so incredibly frustrated with myself, couldn't remember anything. I couldn't even remember where I was driving. There was sticky notes like all over my house. I'm like, hmm, I need to pick up some groceries. Why? Because you need to eat. Small things like that I just could not remember. My cell phone rang and it was a buddy of mine calling and I knew that he had been going through a really, really hard time. But because I was so friggin' angry, I didn't want to answer the phone and upset him more because I was angry and on and on. So I just ignored the phone call and didn't think anything about it. Well, a few days later, my sister had gotten back from traveling and she asked me out to lunch. So I agreed. It was a sunny day in July and I said, sure, I'll go to lunch. I'll try to not be a negative Nancy here. I'll, you know, I'll suck it up and just breathe through my pain. So I'm sitting at lunch with my sister and my cell phone rings and it's a friend of mine who I hadn't heard from in a really long time. And I just kind of ignored the call. I thought, well, maybe he's just, you know, checking in on me, making sure that I'm alive and breathing. I'll call him later. I'm with my sister. So I ignored the call, like I said. Well, he called immediately after, again. And I thought, hmm, something doesn't feel right here. So I answered the phone. And on the other end, I could hear just a bunch of sniffling. And I could tell that he was crying. And what he said next 
nothing, no one could ever have possibly prepared me for. He told me that our mutual friend had decided to take his life. That exact friend that called me only a couple nights before. The only word to really describe how I felt was just numb, just completely numb. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. Why me? Why is this happening to me? It's all I can think about. I was being selfish and I was just angry, so angry. I ended up going back down to Santa Cruz where I grew up for his memorial service. His parents asked me to sing at his memorial service and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I saw all of my friends from high school, mutual acquaintances, and the whole time I thought to myself, what's going on here? This is not supposed to be happening. Where did I go wrong? Where did we go wrong? What is happening? And I thought back to the very last conversation that I'd had with him. And I remember him saying, you know, I just don't feel like I'm enough. Everything I do just doesn't feel enough. So I want to dedicate this album to him and tell him and tell everybody else who has ever felt like they've lost hope, felt just shut down, that you are enough. I'm not telling you all this to be a sob story. I'm not telling you this because my life sucks or whatever. I'm telling you this because I have learned something here and I want to share it with all of you. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I want you to wake up and realize that you are enough, that we are enough. <laughs>